Welcome to the second video in my short series on materials for pre-university or A-level physics. In this video we're going to look at what it really means if force and extension is proportional, what happens if you push the material beyond that limit, the meaning of the words plastic and elastic, and lastly what is actually going on down at the particle level when a material deforms. So lots of great stuff to get our teeth into, so let's jump in. In the first video of this series on materials, we introduced the force extension graph. We now need to look at it in a bit more detail. So we have extension in meters along the bottom and force in newtons up the side. And so the gradient of a force extension graph is going to be change in force over change in extension. And that's going to equal K or the spring constant. And that's often written as F over X or extension equals the spring constant. Now normally, it's worth just pointing out that normally we would put what we change along the x-axis and what we measure up the y, but this time for this graph it's done the other way around. I guess that's just the way that it's developed for this subject. So rubbing these out for the next bit. I've marked a couple of points on the graph and the first one of those is called P and that stands for the limit of proportionality. And it's the point at which if you go any further, the line stops being straight. So up until the point P, this section is completely proportional. And that's known as the Hooke's Law region, because that's the reason in which Hooke's Law, or K is F over X, holds true. The next point moving upwards is known as E. This is the elastic limit. And you'll notice that the curve between P and E is exactly that. It's just beginning to curve over a bit, whereas before P, it was totally straight. Now I'm just going to move this Hooke's Law stuff off, it will help us. The elastic limit is an important quantity or quality of a material, perhaps I should say. So let's just put a line in that goes roughly through the centre of E there. So up until the point E, we can say that the material is in what is known as its elastic region. Now elastic region, not quite the same as the Hooke's Law region, is it? Because the Hooke's Law region only goes up to P. But the elastic region, what happens there is you can put a force up to this force here onto our material. And then when you take the force off our material or our spring, will return back to its original length. However, if you put a force on that is bigger than the elastic limit, then the material goes into the curved section beyond E. And then as you take the force off, it will permanently deform. In other words, it will not return to its original length. And so this region here is known as the plastic region. This second graph shows uh, a permanent deformation. You can see that I've put arrows onto the line showing that we're moving upwards. In other words, we're adding force here and taking force off as we come round, sort of showing the direction of travel, if you like. And you can clearly see that we now have, when there's no force added, we have a new original length, as it were, a new starting point. In other words, it's deformed by that particular distance there. So a few more words about the elastic region and what's actually going on as you add forces or you're stretching the bonds a bit. And if you stretch the bonds and then take the force off, the bonds go back to their original length. And hence, if you stretch, the, stretch an object within the elastic limit, it just returns to its normal, its normal original length. If you keep adding force or weights onto the, the spring out beyond the elastic limit into the plastic limit, then not only do you stretch the bond, but likely the layers of particles will slip over each other. They'll actually change their position relative to each other. Now, when you take the tensile stretch away from the material, the bonds go back to their original length. But because the layers have slipped, there's nothing to slip them back. They don't push back to where they were. And so you end up with a permanent deformation. In the next video, video three, we're going to look at what can you tell or not tell from a force extension graph and why it's so important to introduce things like cross-sectional area and length for a material. This leads us into perhaps the meat and two veg of this topic, which is stress and strain, and then on to look at what is known as the UTS. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.